Hello everyone, this is Brock with Teach Brock Code, here with another episode of the Razor Pages uh, tutorial. This is episode 7. Today we'll be covering view data again, also some conditional, um, conditional, I guess you would say, functions we'll make. So if somebody selects a, a certain uh, option from a list, certain fields in our database will show and if they don't select that they won't show let's get into it okay and as, as you saw on that page there we added last time some fields to our database and to our model they are not here we need to add those on the create page also we are gonna have to add them to the um, log on the index page if you actually want to see them and to the details page to see them. I don't know if we need to see everything we put in on the log page because we will have the details page, but we definitely need them on the create page and edit page. So let's go to our create page. Okay. So here I would say under vehicle is where we will add the maintenance type. So what we will do is just copy this. And just paste it here so you're just taking one of them and then we'll just change the field so instead of vehicle ID I believe we named it maintenance type ID there it is and just change the option that will be default so select service type and right here uh, we will need to make a new view bag. So we do that in the C sharp code behind page, which is the .cs file. So let's go to that. And again, we're just going to follow what we already made. So let's uh, we can copy that, paste it down below, and just change the the name. So let's uh, that word I hate maintenance that I can't spell that well. We're gonna put that in there. So maintenance ID, and because I can't spell it, I am gonna copy it, because then we're gonna to have to put it into the page here under the view bag. So, there. Okay. Let's reload the page. And that page should now contain this field and should have options. I believe we have oil change, tire rotation, I believe is what we added. Maintenance type. Oh, and it's bringing up these because I forgot to change it even though I copied it. So let's, I did change it. Okay, so we are directed Yep, we, we need to change this. So that was a silly uh, mistake. So maintenance type dot, and then this will not be, this will be name, and then this will be name. Now let's try that again. See, little things like that, uh, these are mistakes that, they're not really mistakes, but you'll make them You'll come to the page and just realize instantly what you did wrong and just fix it and there you go. So we actually added a few more than I than I remembered. So we have all these. Now the thing is we do want when we select oil change to see the sub event type oil viscosity. That word that I also can't spell. So we will close this for the time being. And we will Put that in so <clears throat> what we're gonna do is again we're going to copy a div I think it's the easiest way to do this and underneath that one we will put a new one but instead of this we will put an ID on this that's what we can do so let's put an ID of if oil 
Okay. Okay, so we have uh, we have that div if oil, which we're gonna make a function about if oil. But the problem right now is we need to bring the values from the viscosity. So we have in the log we do have oil type ID. Okay, so the label will be the viscosity. The select though is in its own table. So what we're gonna need to do is go to your log model. And we're going to go in here and we are going to do a public virtual oil type oil type. So basically we're making a virtual uh, virtual class inside this model. This way that create page is attached to the model log. By putting this in here it allows you to access any attribute that's inside the oil type model to use. So the name, ID, so this way we could use it. So what we're going to do is take that, we're going to come here and we're going to use it right here. So it would still be logged up because now instead of uh, oil type ID, we would have to go to the oil type table. So we're going to oil type dot and there's the field ID and name from there so we're gonna select from the name there this view bag won't work we're gonna need a new one select um, I guess we could just say oops wrong button oil type And then this right here would be oil type ID. So what we're going to need to do is make a view, another view bag right here. So let's take this one. Copy it. Let's call it oil type ID. Change this to oil type, because that's the model we're referencing. And that should be good there. We can save that file. Back here, change this view bag to oil type ID. So now we'll be going to the label, which is in the log oil type ID. That's the one we did the data annotation for viscosity for. But the actual values, 5W40, 10W30, whatever, so on and so forth, that we didn't add yet, they'll be in the select here from the oil type table under name. And then this references the ASP items. That references the view bag that we're using. That's where we're storing it. And then the validation will be the oil type ID, which is in the log. So if we run this, we should have that field in there. It will be showing right now all the time. Oil viscosity. And it's blank because there's nothing there. But what we could do is go to oil types, create new. Only field is name. And uh, let's just... Uh, 5W30, uh, create, there you go, let's, uh, let's make another one, let's make 10W30, uh, okay, so now we have a few of them, and just to make sure that really worked, come back here, and there they are, okay. More importantly, if I select spark plug, I don't want to see oil viscosity. So, back to this page here, we have the identifier I if oil. So we're going to go to the bottom here and add a function. So, come down here and let's make a 
Let's make a quick function. And, oh, forgot the uh, script type. This is just to let it know that it's, uh, that we're using JavaScript. And inside this script tags, we're going to make our function. So function, let's uh, call it toggle oil. I guess, yeah, toggle oil. And uh, very easy. Let's give an ID above that to the maintenance type. So let's go up here to the maintenance type and let's make that ID um, M-A-I-N-T, because I can't spell that word, S-E-L. So main cell, main, maintenance selected, control C, and let's come back here in a function. So let's go if, pound sign for the, uh, for the ID, mint cell, Oops. option selected, and then we're going to go dot text. So if the option selected dot text, the text of the option, dot includes, I'm going to put includes, not, I'm not going to make it equal just in case for some reason I change it, I don't know, oil changes. Because in the real world you might have something where um, you give people the ability to edit something. So in your code if you had something in there and they did edit, maybe add a word afterwards, if it was equals, it wouldn't, you know, show the options. So I like the includes here because there won't be another one similar to it. Now let's go. Oil change. Then we are going to So I'm typing on my laptop today. I'm not a fan of uh, laptop keyboards, so. If oil, that was the ID of our oil type. And let's uh, dot show. And then else. If oil, dot hide, okay. Yeah, I think that we need that there. That. And let's run it and see if that worked. So let's go home, create, and it's showing. Okay, so let's go back and realize that we didn't call our function. So we're, what we're gonna need to do is actually call our function. So we, we made a function, it probably works, it's probably great. The thing is, we need to actually call that function. So what we're gonna need to do is, I made the function, that's great and all, but what I forgot was, and in case you never really use JavaScript much, 
we need to put it in document.ready. That's something that loads. So this will load on page load. So it's document.ready. And then here we are going to call it on page load. And then we're also going to we are going to so you got dollar sign and then we're going to pound. And right here we need to use the we need to use the mate set select mate cell. So if the mate cell changes function and then call toggle oil. So whenever that's changed, main and selected, it's going to call this function that we created toggle oil. So that way as we go through, as we go through the options, it'll show or it won't show. So we should have this pop up now. And it's there, it's still there. The one thing I don't like about JavaScript, especially in um, within the confines of Visual Studio is, it's really bad at letting you know if something's wrong. <laughs> so let's make sure we have our tags. Always something little. So right here, I forgot that pound sign. Like I said, it doesn't really let you know in uh, JavaScript if there's an error inside uh, Visual Studio. It just, just lets you think everything's good all the time. Not that that matters. <laughs> Let's see. If oil is ever written the same. Let's reload that. Okay, so there was a space also after that, as you saw, I got rid of. So here we could uh, pick the Ultima. Let's go to spark plug, nothing shows up. Oil change brings up these options. Pick one. So what's nice is you can see how quick it is when you use this when you used up and down arrow. So that's uh, that's today's videos. It was nice, it was a refresher for me. I don't usually write JavaScript functions, so that was nice. It's a nice way to show fields though, easily on, um, on a page inside, inside Razor pages. It's nice that you could combine JavaScript easily and do it like that, so, and uh, that concludes today's video. I'll keep it short. Not as short as I wanted it to be, but these errors are good because you won't make them in the future because I made them for you. So with that, this is Brock. Have a good have a good afternoon.